Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you a multi-agent solution for legacy code modernization. If you are someone who has been working for enterprises, bigger companies, uh, then you will be probably aware about code migration or converting code from uh, legacy programming languages or legacy systems to modern programming languages. It's a big, it's a big, big thing. Uh, it's a pain in the neck uh, when it comes to bigger organizations, many of the services based companies, the enterprises, organizations like Infosys, TCS, Capgemini, Wipro, HCL, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, because, you know, they have been uh, working in the IT industry for last 20, 30 years and earlier developers used to work with programming languages like COBOL, uh, you know, uh, Lisp, Fortran, ABAP, SAP ABAP, right, Java EE. And, you know, if you talk about COBOL on mainframes, like that was like, you know, uh, difficult, really complex. And nowadays, when you, when you want to kind of maintain those uh, larger projects, it's very difficult because the modern era developers are not that good, you know, with such legacy languages. And if you look at here on my screen, of course, uh, we have, I have built this uh, multi-agentic solution really functional, uh, really works really good. I have tested it uh, on different things. I'm gonna show you a few things here. Uh, it says enterprise legacy code modernization. Then let me also open D-Linger here. I wanna show you something, you know, on uh, the markdown. So uh, enterprise legacy code modernization or enterprises because they have plethora of uh, projects that has millions lines of codes, right? Let's say if you have COBOL or SAP ABAP, you know, over millions lines of code, it's very difficult to kind of, you know, convert that or migrate that code to a newer programming languages manually, you know, by writing yourself, it's difficult. So, and of course, you know, if you, if you see in the latest time, we are like talking about AI agents and these LLMs are really good when, when it comes to coding problems. Like for example, Claude 4 or, you know, O3 or O4 models, these, these code oriented models are really good. You know, they can, they can understand, uh, you know, millions lines of code uh, in one go when you talk about Gemini 2.5 Pro or any other models because they have large context windows. So you can fit the entire project and let the model understand. Uh, so, uh, that's why I built this multi-agent solution. You can see it over here, code migration using secure. And this agent is also secure. I'm not gonna talk about security part of agents in this video. I'm creating a new separate playlist for secure AI agents, talking about zero trust architectures on AI agent, you know, based on PIP or policy enforcement and so on and so forth. That will follow up in some coming, uh, in, in near future. But for now, you know, uh, you can see it over here, key features, code translations, automated testing, it also generate testing, it do generate documentation, it also runs, uh, it also runs the uh, migrated or converted code. So, so far, you know, it supports, and it's really configurable, it's not a hard coded solution, uh, it works with uh, different languages from source and target language, you know, I'm going to show you that. You can see it says ABAP to Python, COBOL to Java, Fortran to Python, Lisp to Node.js. These are some of the presets. Preset means, you know, that you can try it out these examples, uh, you know, just by quickly clicking on these buttons. Now, if you look at the platform statistics, we have five supported source language, three target languages, four AI agents. So there are four different agents that are working, you know, in tandem to do this. Success rate is like 99.7%. This is a wrong number. Uh, this is something that I just kept it. Now, guys, if you if you look at the uh, let's let's look at the ABAP to Python or let's look at COBOL to Java. So when I click on COBOL to Java, you can find out this particular uh, configure your code migration card. Now, in configure your code migration card, we have migration configuration where you have a way to upload your legacy code file. See, in reality. Uh, when you really want to take it to production level, you will not be uploading a single file, right? In that case, you have to give your entire project. So that will work a bit differently, but the underlying principles or the uh, stack remains the same. We may bring a bit of, you know, embeddings and uh, doing a batch processing kind of stuff, but I just want to show you the capabilities. So if you look at here on uh, legacy code file, right? Drag and drop files here, you can upload ABAP and CBL and COBOL, all these files extensions. Uh, and you can select your source language. So if you look at here, we have COBOL, ABAP, Fortran, Lisp, Java, EE, and then you can convert to three target languages, Python, Node.js, and Java. Now, when I click on browse files, uh, let me go to desktop here and go to YT, 
uh, go to secure agent, secure crew base, input, and then I'm gonna upload a COBOL file. You can see I have a COBOL file here. Now this is this file is from IBM. Okay, so if I just go on search on COBOL, uh, you can see the COBOL project over here, right? Let me show you COBOL is fun. So these are real project. You can see these are now public archive because they are so old, like five years back. Uh, and uh, this is a project I have taken. It's called JSON Parse. So I have taken JSON Parse as a project and I want to convert that to uh, into let's say Java, right? And this is the COBOL pro uh, program. You can see some of the preview of that program here. It says COBOL code page, BCBS identification division, data division, so on and so forth. It gives you a preview of the file. Now, uh, when you are converting from COBOL to Java. A code execution feature will not work because code execution feature only works when you are converting a uh, programming language or code to Python code. And it also shows you where you are saving this file. Now, when you click on run migration, it's going to run the migration. But before that, you can see the configuration summary. As I told you, right, it's really a configurable tool. It's, the tool has been created in a way that you can configure it based on your convenience or based on your requirement. Now, if you look at here, the source file, the source language, the target language, the output file, the code execution, and a file preview. Now, what I'm going to do is click on Run Migration. The moment I do Run Migration, you can see it says Processing Migration. This may take a few minutes. Now, as this is based on agentic AI, you know, multi-agent system, it's going to take a bit of time it's going to take a few minutes but meanwhile i can show you the uh, code here how it works so as i told you right I, i'm not going to cover the security part of it i have some kind of zero trust architecture for agents uh, to to make the agents really responsible and secure uh, in the near future but there are only two files that we're going to talk about secure crew secure crew pi and app.py so if you look at the secure crew you know, we have been using Gemini model because they give you in free open AI models and so on and so forth. We have this secure crew based file uh, class, excuse me. We have, as I said, right, we have make, made it really configurable, configured. You can see the source language, the target language, the allow code execution. Uh, from default, ABAP to Python is there. You know, by default, if you don't select anything, uh, we are loading the file. I have something called build context from file. This is basically my context file within the security. Uh, if you look at context.py, uh, it says read input files, you know, from context ingestion standpoint. And then I have, excuse me, I'm going to secure crew. Uh, then I have here enforce policy. I have some policies because when you convert, uh, let's say when you convert a file and you want to run it on code execution, I want to run it, right? It, it might be dangerous where agents are accessing your file systems or they delete some files or they do something. So I have a... Uh, I have a policy here, very simple pip file. You can see dangerous keywords like os.systems, executions, eval, subprocess, and sale. I have asked it not to use this, and I'm enforcing these policies. In future, I'm going to create a playlist on agent sick ops, security ops for agents. So I'll cover this part in details. But for now, let's go back to secure crew here. And then uh, we are loading the files, enforcing the policy before the execution, and sliding the models here with a fallback. So it really works with the fallback. So if one model is not working, it will fall back to the other models. Uh, then we have code executor if target is Python. Uh, if code execution is not possible, then it gives you this uh, warning. And then we have some uh, crew initiations. And then let me just show you the main thing. These are not the main thing here. We have some test agent for the model testing if the APIs are working fine. Now here I have defined the agent. So we have four agents here, guys. One is called secure code analyst that takes a source language and convert it to a safe target language, a backstory. The other agent is a code reviewer. So when the code is converted, that particular agent will review that code for correctness and will also execute it. And will only execute it if you have Python as a target language because code executor is on, interpret is only available for that. And then we have test case author that basically writes your test cases for the generated code. And then we have take documentarian, it documents your entire project, right? Uh, entire code that we have converted. And then we have give them some relevant tasks, some format, some instructions. You can see the final output looks like this. So this is how, this is how my agents looks like. I have some languages and some config that I have defined. And then we have same thing here, app.py, which is a streamlit application, pretty standard streamlit application, nothing fancy here. Uh, but yeah, we can make that fancy, of course, if you want. So let me just go back, right? Oh, okay, I'll just make this up. Now, 
SQL execution is happening. Input file, we are keeping it here. So I keep all the inputs here. You can also upload it through Streamlit and the output comes over here. You can see the output, right? We get all the outputs. And the good thing is I'm creating my own logs. I'm not using any other logs uh, thing. Like I'm already creating a log using, uh, we have a logger. In the log we create using, you know, open telemetry and whatnot in the logger.py file. So I'm using open telemetry, combining with some custom logics uh, and to create a log file. Because it doesn't make sense to kind of use any third party API driven uh, logging tool. You can create logging by yourself. It's pretty easy to do that. So we have keep log of everything. For example, if I show you some previous one, I have so much of good logs over here. If the models are not available, what kind of errors comes up? And you can also stream this on a dashboard if you want. So this is on the logs front, guys, right here. Now, uh, this is fine. So modernized code report, blah, blah, blah. And you can see we got our output over here. It says JSON parsing. You know, you can find out the final Java code. It's pretty standard report. It creates a report for you. If you look at here, it says, the COBOL data structures were translated into Java classes, client data, billing info, and transactions. If you remember on the code that we were showing you, and you can of course go and show the see the code, see, uh, see the code here, of course, yourself. Go and understand this code. I'll give this link in description. We have some kind of review notes because it's a documentation in the end with the final code. And this is the Java code block that it has converted or migrated from your COBOL to Java. You can see it creates public class JSON parse. You know, it has client data structure. It has billing information structure. It has pretty nice and clean commented code. You can see it over here. And it, it writes some unit test functions as well. You know, uh, and it gives you some metadata section. So COBOL 120 line approx, uh, Java 150 lines, 10 uh, functions in the Java code, including getters and setters. So basically gives you a metadata sections as well. No warnings were raised here, guys. So pretty standard output that it basically gives you once you do the code migration tasks and we can find out the same file here you know in the modernized code report right so if you go here you can find out the same thing as an output so you can also save this wherever you are working in your own uh let's say project directory uh, it depends on you can download the results we download the file i'm not going to download it and you can also do a new migration it will uh, it, it will work a bit differently when you work with you know uh python uh, when your target language is Python, because when you do Python, it's going to execute the code and it's going to show you the result over here. I'm, I haven't executed it here, but yeah, you can figure it out yourself, not a big thing. But, you know, we have documentations, the result. If you go to, again, let's go to configure migration. I come back here. If I go to results again, the results will be here as well in the tool because I'm handling the session state of this particular uh, project, right? And it's called Enterprise Great Legacy System Transformation, an agent-based solution that basically helps you, you know, convert code or do a code modernization project. So if you're working uh, with SAP ABAP or you're working with, uh, you know, any kind of such tools uh, on S4 HANA or some, something and you want to convert it to BTP or you are working with uh, COBOL mainframe. So you're working with Lisp Fortran or Java EE and you want to convert it or migrate it into modern languages or stack, you can reach out, right? And definitely help with this multi-agent solutions. You can find it out over here. It has enterprise features. As I said, it is secure, fast, tested, documented and by AI anytime or whatever the YouTube channel. So pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, interface we can of course i can help you customize if you want to work with this project let me know in the comment box if you have any thoughts feedbacks comments please do uh in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channels guys because in enterprises these are the biggest header guys huge market even more than 500 million dollars that's a huge huge market for code migration globally uh so if you like the video please hit the like icon if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, guys. That motivates me to create more such videos in near future. Uh, hit the like icon if you like the video, uh, because that will increase the reach, guys, a bit. Uh, that's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.